Hey everybody, JB back with you once again, and welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. We are on the second half of the first day of the trial of, um, I almost forgot his name, Matt on Card. <laughs> Sorry everybody, it's been a little while since I last recorded. You probably noticed I didn't have an episode go up on Friday if you've been keeping up with the series every day, and uh, that's because life has been really chaotic here. So uh, I'm trying to pump out more of these, but please bear with me right now. Um, things have been a little hectic right now, especially with work, and I'm trying to also balance a social life. So um, yeah, this has kind of been taking last priority as far as life stuff goes. But I'm here today and we're going to continue on with the story. So let's see what happens. Dude, I can't believe that Adrian. No way! Not cool and collected Adrian Andrews. That's right, um, at the end of the last episode we finally put the, uh, um, the spotlight on Matt's manager, Adrian, for being the one who, uh, killed Juan Cordita, the, um, victim in this case. Although knowing this game's formula, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, she ends up not being the, the guilty party. Mainly just because the first day of trial, you, you're you usually focusing on the wrong person, if the past is any gauge. Um, but the other thing that happens, the probably the more important thing, is that Edgeworth is back. That's right, Edgeworth is back, and uh, he is replaced Von Karma as the prosecutor in this case, which is pretty exciting. And for some reason my window went inactive, so let me... there we go. She is your manager. It would have been very easy for her to pull this off. The only person who had easy access to the knife you used at dinner was, well, her. So after the ceremony during the break, huh? I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See, she could have also easily planted that blood-stained or blood-covered button in your hakama. Hmm, because she was the one that came to wake me up. Then, dude, you're saying it really was her? Yes, she is the real killer. She was the one who murdered Juan Corita. But, why? I thought she was buds with Juan. She has her own agenda. Her own agenda? What are you talking about? I'm sure you'll see by the time this trial's over. That's right, I guess we didn't tell him about her getting close to Juan to get that information about her mentor's death, so he wouldn't have known about that, I suppose. It'll be alright. I'll get you acquitted by the end of today. Give me a verdict that's refreshing like a spring breeze, okay, Mr. Lawyer Dude? Oh, that's right, I probably should throw my earlier speculation about her being the first day killer out the window, because we're supposed to get an acquittal for Matt by the end of today, so anything can happen, I suppose. Phoenix. You think her motive is related to Celeste Impact's missing suicide note, right? Yes. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impact as her strength and reason to live. But then Miss Impact suddenly killed herself. It sounds like she left a suicide note and the person thought to have hidden it is Juan Corita, the victim of this murder. And that's why I think that Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Corita, all to get the suicide note back. That still doesn't explain why she would have killed him, though. That sounds plausible. But one thing bothers me. Um, what? Who was it that first told us about their relationship? Better stated, Miss Andrews' dependency issues with regards to Miss Impacts. It was Edgeworth. That's true. Huh. It looks like he's still the one in command of this ship. Indeed, I'm curious to know what he has got planned. Don't let your guard down yet. Alright, well, we are now in the afternoon. Normally we would be in the office by now, getting ready to investigate. Court will now reconvene! Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please! The prosecution calls the witness subpoenaed by this court. Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Mr. Juan Corita's room. Oh yeah, that's the other thing, is that uh, Edgeworth already prepared Adrian for coming to court today. So obviously he knows something's up. 
She's still holding that card. What is your occupation? I am the manager of the defendants in this case, Mr. Matt on guard. I see. Now then. Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. What is it? I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing, and would love to find out more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. I like how that's in quotes. Ah, uh, no, I have no idea what you mean. I've never even heard of Gossip Land. Uh, well, you just named it. If the judge was ever a prosecution witness, he'd do all my work for me. Anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relation to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Corita. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Juan, but this was a private matter between Juan and myself. Mm, so it was a fry and bait matter! Or was that bait and fry? Reminds me of fishing! I don't think I've ever heard that term. It's, you're not talking like, like bait and switch, are you? But I... But, but I didn't kill him. No one is accusing you of that. Well, yeah. I think there's someone who would beg to differ. I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Miss Andrews. Very well, then. Witness, please testify to the court about what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place. Okay. When I found the body. It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. After that, I went to Juan's room. And there was his dead body. I... I was in shock. What I saw was, naturally, this exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. You poured yourself a glass of juice? Yes. Sadly, I didn't remember not to touch things at the scene of a crime. And I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the wine glass were made, Your Honor. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Phoenix. She is one cool and collected customer, and she has the brains to match. Yes, I know. In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head-on confrontations. You should disrupt her pacing. Disrupt her pacing? She's the type of woman who is easily thrown off by things inconsistent with her thinking, so you have to attack when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offense is the instant this trial's over. Understand? Is she basically hinting to just press up continually? Ah, oh, that's right. We, I forgot we had our depleted health as well. Uh, I'm just gonna look real quick here. Um, I want to see the... Oh, this is the hallway picture. I want to see the crime scene photo. It's been a little while, so I, I do want to refresh myself here. Okay, so the wine glass is there. Okay. Let's start pressing. And what was Mr. On Guard doing at that time? He was taking a nap. He was worn out from his mini performance as the Nickel Samurai during the ceremony. Hmm, Mr. On Guard did say he was taking a nap. Then I guess you could say he could not have been taken out of his room, yes? Excuse me? It's? What are you... Right. I thought years of school would have taught you how to construct a sentence. If you can't make a sensible sentence with a subject, then I'll make one for you. Watch. Did you, Miss Andrews, remove Mr. On Guard's knife from his room? No. Hmm. Subject, verb, object, right? Did you skip basic grammar? The witness may continue. Hashtag rude. And why did you do that? As a friendly gesture, Juan was to make an appearance with the other heroes. So the show was supposed to be a show of friendship, huh? Well, I'm definitely going to press further on that. Is that the only reason? I beg your pardon? What are you implying? 
Okay, so she really likes specificity. You had a certain goal in mind when you started to get close to him, correct? So perhaps you had a more personal matter to discuss with the victim. Sorry, but I didn't have any such intentions in mind at that time. I can't get her to talk without a strong piece of evidence, I guess. May we continue now? Witness, what did you see when you got to his room? You were in shock. What? Was I not supposed to be? Miss Andrews is a very calculating person. And despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic feelings for Mr. Corita. Anyone randomly stumbling upon a dead body would be in shock. And you can't seriously expect that a young beauty like her would not be shocked. Somehow I don't think beauty has anything to do with being shocked or not. Yeah, that was my thought too. Hmm, I see. This is the photo you're referring to, correct? Yep, it's that one. Yes, the one with the knife lodged in his chest. And the guitar case was like this too? Yes, it was open and empty, of course. And then, what did you do next, witness? Juice. Yes, there was a bottle of tomato juice on the table, so I helped myself. But you didn't drink any of it, did you? Huh? There were no lip marks left on this wine glass to suggest that anyone drank from it. I... I wasn't feeling terribly great, so I set the glass down without drinking it. She seemed kind of shocked there for a second. Miss Andrews, I would like to confirm with you one more time. When you discovered the dead body of Juan Corita, you were in great shock, and that's when you poured yourself the glass of juice, correct? And what of it? My mind really was a complete blank at the time. Your mind was a complete blank? I didn't think that was possible for you. Aren't you rude today? I was so dazed that I made one careless mistake. That one thing. What one thing? Um, never mind. It's no big deal. What was she starting to say just now? Oh, let's press. Miss Andrews, I'm convinced that as you said, you made a mistake at the scene of the crime. What I really want to know is what this mistake was. Hmm, actually, so would I. I, I'm sorry, it's just, it's kind of embarrassing. When I, when I set the glass down the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. Well, I guess we did see that strewn all over the floor. Flower vase? Are you talking about the one on the floor in the crime scene photo? This mess of glass shards? It was originally on top of the dresser, but when I bumped into it with my elbow, it fell onto the guitar case. Why did you withhold such an important piece of information? Also, if that were the case, why weren't there shards inside the guitar case? I'm sorry, I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray, that people would simply assume the vase was just another part of the mess. It looks like yet another fact has come to light here. Please add this and anything else you have to reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry, but I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. Um, I'm really curious if we we're supposed to actually present the crime scene photo here. Because there is no pieces of the vase inside it, and I find that really odd. Yeah! Awesome! You testified that you knocked the flower vase over, is this correct? Yes. And are you sure it fell onto the guitar case? Is there some problem with what I said? It's not some problem, it's a major problem. More like a C major problem. Get it? Music? Guitar? N never mind. It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water. However, that's exactly what is so strange. Miss Andrews, you testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However, if that was true, the case should have gotten wet on the inside, not on the outside. Oh! 
I didn't think of it like that. I was thinking more that there weren't any pieces of the vase inside the case. But I guess the vase would have had water in it, so it makes sense that uh, um, the timing of when it happened is what matters here. Well, that's very true! Furthermore, there's one other strange thing about this guitar case. And what, what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. The remains of the vase are scattered on the floor. And what is wrong with that? If the guitar case was open when the vase fell, the glass shard should be inside, not outside the case. Okay, that that's what I was thinking, too. Ah! What is your point, right? That the case was closed at the time the vase was knocked over? Is that all? No. Think back to what Miss Andrews testified to. She said that other than the vase, she didn't touch anything else. Mm. Yes, that's right. She did implicitly say she didn't touch the guitar case. But, but this whole matter with the guitar case is a dead end. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. It has no bearing on this case at all. Are we sure about that? That may very well be, however... Our, the empty guitar case does seem to have no relation to this case, doesn't it? Hmm, it seems that there is no deeper meaning to the guitar case. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think we need to hear more details about the guitar case? Yes. The empty guitar case... I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. Heh, <laughs> I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this, but it is you. I can't believe I'm doing this either. All right, I'll follow along for now. Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. The guitar case. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. It's not a big deal though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Hmm. I have a good idea about why you opened the case. Hmm, it looks like this really wasn't a very important point. This wastefulness is such a familiar feeling by now that it's almost comforting. Um, anyway, I'll just go ahead and start the cross-examination. Hmm, using any way to change the topic. A convenient escape for a weak man. I'm curious, I've learned from the past that maybe you need to press first, so... I'm gonna press this first before we do anything. Was that because you were shocked and dazed at discovering the victim's body? Yes, that's probably it. Probably it. I'm not going to get anywhere if I continue pressing her like this. The only way to make her talk is with evidence. I guess I should give it a try. Come on, Phoenix, we can't afford to let up on her now. Okay, I think this is the end of cross-examination stuff. I wasn't planning on letting up, but she's at her weakest now, so this is our chance. Yeah, if we had a weapon to hit her with. I'm sure a weapon is hiding somewhere in the court record waiting to be found. I see we still have some thought reading going on here. Alright, um... I'm gonna present that. I think that's, uh... No? Aw. Crap, okay. I'm gonna see what we need to do here. Oh, um... Apparently we can present the guitar case here, which is weird. Oh! I think we're supposed to use this as a contradiction, because it has Juan's fingerprints, not hers. That makes sense. 
There's no way you were the one who opened the guitar case. Why would you say that? It's elementary, my dear. Because the only fingerprints on this guitar case are those of the victim. Ah. What is it, Miss Andrews? You shouldn't assume that I must have left prints just because I touched the case. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you that I was wearing gloves at the time? Gloves? But why would you be wearing gloves at the time? It was the night of the award ceremony, so of course I dressed up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing a pair of thin gloves. Hmm, I see. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems the witness was wearing gloves at the scene of the crime. Um, I'm going to say that's strange. You were wearing gloves? Isn't that a little strange? Why is that strange? Do you have something that would prove I was not wearing gloves at the time? Uh, let's look. I feel like we have a picture. Um... I'm going to present this. I think it's time for you to go home now, right? Before you hurt yourself, that is. Hurt myself? It's alright, Mr. Wright. You don't have to push yourself so hard. I guess I was trying a little too hard there. Now, if the defense has no further objections, let's return to the testimony. Oh. Uh, did I just present the wrong piece of evidence? Hang on. Because clearly we're supposed to go somewhere with this. I'm tempted to look up uh, the answer to this if I don't get it here, because we had to go through all this in order to get to this point. The fact that you can go through this seems to suggest that there's a reason for it. Either that or maybe you're not supposed to say that something is strange. Okay, that's not anything. And this is just text, so... Oh, this, because her fingerprints are on the wine glass. I have your proof right here. This wine glass. The wine glass. You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass. Ah. Even if you took your gloves off when you poured yourself this glass of juice, wouldn't you think it was just a little strange? That you put your gloves back on just to open the guitar case? Ung! Ooh. She's starting to break. Order! 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 Looks like you hit on the, the nail on the head this time. What do you mean? I believe that guitar case plays a very important role here. But it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty, though. But, but the guitar, the bright red guitar, was at the studio. What if the guitar wasn't the uh, the deal here? Like, what if there was something slightly um, more important than that that we're just completely missing? I'm starting to wonder. Phoenix, drop all of your presumptions. What was in the guitar case was not the bright red guitar. You don't mean it was a bright white guitar? Wait, that's not right either. No, I, th I have an idea. Hmm, I admit it would be unnatural for someone to do that. So the witness was not wearing gloves despite the fact that on the case... Your Honor, this is obviously the defense's usual misdirection tactic at work. Steer the court towards an unrelated topic and lull us all into his misguided... No, Your Honor. Please recall that Miss Andrews had testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case, which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. 
However, it is wide open in this photo of the crime scene. I'm sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. If you are so sure, right, then I'm sure you can somehow substantiate your outrageous claim, correct? Please enlighten us as to why that guitar case has anything at all to do with this murder. Uh, can you do that, Mr. Wright? Um, well, let's suppose for a second that the bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been in the case. The bright red guitar not being the only thing? You don't mean to suggest that a bright black guitar was inside them. So, you intend to push your theory that the case was not empty? Is that it, right? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. Deflate that head of yours. You haven't proven anything yet. Now then, let's have it. What was inside this case at the time of the murder? Um... See, I'm, I'm ner I don't know if I should present this, because... It this is not actually the suicide note. Unless it's meant to be... The knife. I'm going to present this. And why would something like that be inside a guitar case, let alone this this one? Oh, no. Uh, that's not the right answer. No. <laughs> Can't a foolishly foolish fool get some love? I, I appreciate that uh, Phoenix has let Von Karma get to him a little bit. Okay. Um... I'm gonna look this up. I don't want to lose any more stuff. Oh! The costume. Okay. That's right, we were going somewhere with this. See, this is the problem with recording these so far apart. I forgot about the whole costume thing. At least briefly. I, I remembered it a little bit when we presented the photo earlier. This is... this is a photograph! Yes, but what is important is what is in that picture, Your Honor. In this picture? It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I'm proposing is... Inside the guitar case was the Nickel Samurai! The hero's very own costume. What? Like how the music came in here. Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Right. Are you saying that the witness opened the guitar case to take out a costume? What insane point would there be to do doing something like that? That insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Miss Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Miss Andrews? I refuse to accept your theory. Do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop. And in the end, she managed to get this shot, correct? You... you mean this photo? Order! Order! It looks like we've wandered into quite another mess again, haven't we? Nice job, Phoenix. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. Hmm, so the real murderer was hiding inside a costume. Wait one second, Your Honor. The Nickel Samurai's costume would have been Matt, Mr. Matt on guards. Why would something of the defendant's be in the victim's room? And inside the guitar case, of all places. Hmm, true, that is a little baffling. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. What was this Nickel Samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? Um, I'm gonna say it was stolen. I think it may have been stolen from Mr. On Guard. Stolen? But why would someone do such a thing? Maybe the thief wanted to interfere with the post-ceremony stage show. Hmm. And so, if he didn't have his costume, then Mr. On Guard would be forced to go naked. Oh, I don't think this is the right answer. 
Maybe you should be stripped naked and run out for making a mockery of this court. Excuse me? Mr. Matt on guard did not take his costume off after the award ceremony. Oh, that's right. He even testified that he took a nap while still wearing his costume. Is this not correct? Ah, uh, yeah, he did say something like that, didn't he? Oh, that's what I thought. Okay. Mr. On Guard did not take his costume off during the break period. In that case, the costume we are talking about was a spare one. What? Then, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two Nickel Samurai costumes at the Gatewater Hotel? Yes, that is what I'm saying. And how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? It would mean that the victim himself had brought the spirit to the ceremony on purpose. But, but why? The victim, Mr. Corito, was the Jammin' Ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai spare costume with him? What could be the reason behind such a peculiar act? And therein lies the sticking point. What are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? Huh? No, I just... Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had the Nickel Samurai's spare costume? Phoenix, are you sure you can explain this one? Think carefully before you answer. And then answer with gusto. I believe in you. Alright, this is what I think. The reason the victim brought the, nil the Nickel Samurai spare costume to the hotel was... Um... I don't think it's this, if the Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. But maybe. Because this is about Juan bringing it. Right? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to look it up. I'm, I'm scared. I really wish that I had more health right now. Um. Oh, it is the press conference ticket. Okay. Okay. So I was on the right track with that. What is this? On the night of the murder, after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at this conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up, right? But what struck me as strange was that Mr. On Guard himself said he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference at night. That's true. But how can that be? The way I see it, that can only mean one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Corita himself. The victim? Yes. The spare nickel samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Oh. Mr. Corita was going to hold the press conference as the nickel samurai. He was going to dress up as the nickel samurai and hold a conference? Okay, if this is true, then I'm curious now... If Matt sleeping after the whole thing uh, happened was maybe a little more arranged than we might have thought. Because, I mean, how could they have made sure that he wouldn't know about it? But why would the victim do such a thing? That's something I don't quite know yet. However, what I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at that conference. The Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. And by confess, I'd wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Juan Corita, posing as the Nickel Samurai, was going to speak about Matt on guard. Yes, I guess that is what I would mean. But if that's the case, that's not a confession. That's public disclosure. Hmm. Well, Miss Andrews, I can see why you are a pros at what you do. 
Pardon me? Yes, just as you say. The press conference was set up by Juan. So you knew about this? Miss Andrews, please offer us an explanation for this. I was the one he asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared the second costume for him, that was also me. You? Juan had bet everything on the Jammin' Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. He was going to ruin him, huh? It looked like somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Ooh. What? That sounds very peculiar. And do you know what this secret of Mr. On Guards is, Miss Andrews? That's something only Juan knew. I... I don't know what it is. Ah, I see. I... I've probably been coming off quite suspicious to everyone, but that's to be expected. I've been trying to protect Matt, after all. Protect Mr. On Guard? You know, with this latest revelation, it seems like Matt has even more of a motive uh, to take Juan out of the game. And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. Miss Andrews, if you could, please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor, I understand. Protecting Matt. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill Juan no matter what, and he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course, the button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. Hmm, this does account for everything. Well, I am the logical type. We're finally seeing her true self. She is more nervous than a scared rabbit. If the defense can find no fault with this testimony, I am ready to make a ruling. Please keep that in mind as you cross-examine, Mr. Wright. Looks like somehow everything has swung to the opposite end of the scale again. That just means I have to put my weight into this and turn our logic upside down. Okay. Would you say that was your intuition speaking to you? Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. Er, if you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things? A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. And if you think these three things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should have already known that, Phoenix. They didn't teach that to us in school, at least not from what I remember. I feel like they should have. May I continue now? Alright. So would you say this need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Juan chose that event in that hotel for the conference? Because that was when he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved Matt on guard. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. But, I'm sure Mr. On Guard himself didn't know anything about the press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? Anyway, the important thing here is that this information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree. Miss Sanders, please correct your testimony if you please. Rasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? I know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. Has Mr. On Guard done something to hurt or betray you personally? Why do you ask? You were the one who helped Mr. Corrido with his press conference. And that event was supposed to bring down Mr. On Guard, yet you still helped out. Objection. The person on trial right now is Mr. On Guard, right? What the witness was thinking helping the victim with his plan is none of our concern. I think it has a little bit of weight here. In any case, this means that the defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? But, but didn't you already testify earlier that Mr. On Guard was taking a nap in his room? Are you telling me now that that too was a lie so you could cover for Mr. On Guard? I'm not telling you anything of the sort. 
when I went to get him for the show, he honestly was sleeping. However, as to whether he was sleeping the entire time, that I cannot say. I was too busy setting up the stage at the time. Hmm, I keep trying, but I can find no flaws with what Miss Andrews has said. I can't say the same for some people in the, here in this courtroom, however. The judge is glaring straight at Mia. He's glaring at you, smart guy. Okay, so... Let's see whether we get anything here. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. Then, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and his murderer fought. And during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the Jammin' Ninja's costume. You're talking about this button, correct? That button was found at the pleats of Matt's Hakama, isn't that correct? I would admit, think that that makes it the very decisive evidence. Irk. Looks like you were on Fox again, Mr. Wright! Anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. With an icy stare, yes. Miss Andrews, for Mr. Wright's sake, please add this information to your testimony. And how do you know that? When the ends of the threads on the button and the costume were matched up, they were found to fit together perfectly, or so I heard. Hmm, I've heard that before, too. But why would Miss Andrews know about this case down to such a fine detail? Don't look at me like that, just because I'm prepared and you are not. Arg, I thought I had heard this time for sure. If there's anything to trip her up on, it has to be here. But where and what? What you really did was stab the guy in the back, didn't you? And at the worst possible time. Who's to say she really stabbed the guy in the back, as you put it? This witness could have disclosed things about Mr. On Guard at any time. Why then would she wait until there was a large audience before doing so? It's the same reason why Mr. Corita planned such an elaborate conference. Miss Andrews wanted to cause Mr. On Guard as much damage as she possibly could. This witness bears ill will towards the defendant. This isn't the Phoenix Wright Wax Philosophical Power Hour. And please, stop slandering the witness. As I expected, Miss Andrews' testimony seems pretty solid. Really? Because to me it sounded a little wishy-washy. Wishy-washy? Well, I guess we'll see if I press a little more. You should know this by now, but you'll need strong, decisive evidence to make her talk. Got it, Chief. I'm going to pin you down this time, Miss Andrews. Okay. Um, what were the new things here? I think it was... This and then this. I'm going to look at the... I don't really see anything here that would uh, be a contradiction. So here's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna try to guess what the correct answer is and then look at the right answer before I go for it. I, I don't wanna save scum. Um, I'm looking at all these things here. What was the other? I know what his motive is was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. Is there a way that we can prove something? I feel like it's strange that we can... We can unlock this statement, and then we can unlock the other one. And it kind of makes me wonder if we have to do more. Okay, um, I'm gonna look up the answer. I honestly don't know. Sorry, everybody. Oh, we're supposed to present the autopsy report? On this thing? Whoops. There goes my window again. 
Okay. This is the victim's autopsy report. Inquiry states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. Strangulation? The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. And what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. Or, let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it. Which would mean that if it was ripped off of the costume, when? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly, which means... Oh, I get it. It is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. Ah. That's right, Miss Andrews. There is no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off of the victim's already dead body. I'm really bad at putting things together like that. Order! Order! Where's the meaning? What is the meaning of this, right? So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Well, I'd say that means that there was some tampering involved. Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We now know this button was not torn off during the fight, so the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with the button? What was it? I would say to pin the crime on guard. Uh, yes, that is correct. There is only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. On Guard. There is no way anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. That's right, Mr. On Guard was set up. By the real killer, of course. And the real murderer is... Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer, then? Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet. Not until the very end. The real killer, the real killer, the person who planned to frame Mr. On Guard is... I mean, I think this is the only option. Miss Adrian Andrews. I choose you, Pikachu. You are Mr. Corita's killer. What? Order, order, order! Mr. Wright, this is a very grave matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. Wh how preposterous! You can't stick any of that on me. I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then, then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion on to Mr. On Guard, naturally. The knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you. Then, what... Well, what about the button that was found in Matt's Hakama? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the person who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. On Guard was the real killer, there is no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his own Hakama. Ugh. The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Ungard's Hakama is the person who went to wake him from his nap, which is you yet again, Miss Andrews. I, I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. That costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was just such a costume inside the guitar case? It can only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is... You, Miss Adrian Andrews. No, I... 
but Miss Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case. And it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. That, that's right! That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But, the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposefully left her fingerprints on the glass to show that yes, indeed, she was the classic dazed discoverer of a dead body. Ah! And to top it all off, there is this photo. Yep, there is that photo. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on Earth can believe this nickel samurai is Mr. On Guard. He would be too short for his own costume if it was him. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in stature, are you not? Please, stop. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't bring that up earlier, because I, I thought of that last time when we were recording, when they were talking about the height of the person. I guess we... well, I guess technically we did, because we called her in. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Um, I've got her this time. Miss Andrews? I, I, I refuse to testify. What was that? There's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something if it can incriminate me. Um, wasn't there like a similar thing in the last game with one of the, the characters? Um, well, it wasn't like a normal person though. But, um, uh, I feel like saying something like this should not be invoked lightly. I mean, this is pretty incriminating. Well, yes. You're absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination by allowing a witness to not testify if the testimony can cause damage to themselves. What? Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. Actually, thinking back to yesterday in Mr. On Guard's room... Adrian Andrews. Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, Alright. That's it. That's what Francisca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews to not testify if things looked bad. You did a good job proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there is still one thing you haven't done. Something I haven't done? Heh, heh, heh. What's wrong, right? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence? What is so humorous, Mr. Retworth? I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor. But everything the good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. What? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. Uh, whoops. Proof that Miss Andrews did, in fact, harbor a wish to murder Mr. Corita. Miss Andrews, you... Did you want to kill Mr. Corita? I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There's nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due, due to my silence. No! She's taking that defiant attitude again. Mia, what should we do? Somehow we've landed in the worst possible situation. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Miss Adrian Andrews has refused to testify. And the defense's theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definitive proof. But that's not true. In this situation, there is only one thing this court can do, and that is to declare a recess. Recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter, and at tomorrow's trial, 
Tomorrow? We don't have till tomorrow. We don't have a tomorrow. If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then... Please wait, Your Honor. That That's not necessary. The trial... Please continue the trial. Where are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That, that's not it. This isn't about that. Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is. Please, let the trial continue. If I don't get the verdict, then Maya... Uh-oh. He doesn't know about that, does he? But it's impossible to continue as long as the ref witness refuses to testify. Now then, this court is... It is not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Edgeworth, well, what are you... It's true Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However, if the topic of conversation were something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Yes, that is very true, but... Actually, there is one little thing that I'm curious about. Miss Andrews, when you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes, and... I can't help but think how unnatural that is. Usually when one finds a body, they are shaken up, not stirring a glass of juice. I see what you did there. So my actions were unusual, but I've already... Before you speak, I want to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. Ooh, Edgeworth has bought us some time. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Edgeworth today, but I can't get a good read off of him. Is he friend or foe? I just don't know. Why not both? The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrews, if you please. When I found the body, uh, again, apparently, because that was the title of the first segment, that glass of juice, I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower vase over. Okay, there's one very glaringly wrong thing with that, and that's that shouldn't there have been a knife stuck in him? Hmm, so you poured that glass of juice for the victim. Why did you say so in your earlier testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Edgeworth, what the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Alright, I'm going to check to see if that's the correct answer. Let's see. I'm going to get the music here. Yeah, it is the knife thing, so... Let us present the crime photo here. Yeah. So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body? Ah! What is the meaning of- What is the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There is a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Corita's chest. Anyone who saw this scene would have immediately thought that here was a dead man. Ah, um, that's, well, you see, I doubt a single person in the world would mistake this for someone who fainted and then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Your point is? Miss Andrews, your testimony just now, it was all one giant lie. Um. And your lie has proven one thing very clearly. That you are the real killer. No! It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. The defendant, Mr. Man on Guard, is not guilty after all. That... but that's impossible. You're wrong. 
Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. It... it wasn't me. It wasn't me, I tell you. It was Matt, I swear it. He's the one who killed Juan. But you were the one who refused to testify. And your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself. That's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? I... I... I refuse to testify. Is this about, uh... Celeste Impacts and... Her, um, need for... Oops, I, I didn't read that. Mr. Matt on Guard's innocence has been clearly demonstrated. And I accidentally unfocused the window again. Is... is it over? Have we... have we found the truth at last? What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually... Well, usually, the real killer confesses his or her guilt. And now that I think about it, this is the first time someone hasn't. That's true. Now then, I would like to hand down my verdict for Mr. Matt on guard. Objection. Your Honor, the prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. What? The reason is quite simple. This witness has yet to speak the absolute, real truth. The absolute, real truth? What are you... Witness, don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head, but as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Matt on guard will go free, and in his place... You will become the guilty party. Th that's... that's a lie. I... I don't believe you. What? I... I was told if I spoke... If I spoke, then it would be all over, and Matt would never be declared guilty. What in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I... I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francisca Von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews lives by gripping tightly onto the words of another, because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. Then, right now, Miss Andrews is... Yesterday, she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Von Karma. Don't say a word, or don't say a word, no matter what happens. If you do, Matt on guard will be acquitted. Miss Andrews undyingly believes in those words right now and is clinging onto them. Then what should we do? This this is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. But Miss Andrews has to be the killer, right? All we have to do now is is get her not guilty. That is my only priority. It wasn't me. I'm begging you, please believe me. I didn't kill Juan. I'm getting the impression that there's something different that's going on here, and we basically have to choose between getting her not guilty versus potentially pinning it on somebody innocent. Help, please, someone, help me. Mr. Wright! Yes, Your Honor. The court can't continue on like this, therefore I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right, I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what this witness did and what she did not do. And think about who is the real mastermind behind this crime. Who's the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There's no one else it could be except the woman crying over there. Right? Come now, what will you do? What kind of man are you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I'm going to go with Force Andrews to testify. I think that's the right thing. I had to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But, I can't bring myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. Miss Andrews, I would like to know what you are really hiding. Mr. Wright, are you sure you know what you're doing? Sure, Mr. On Guard would like an acquittal, but in his place you would be found guilty. Is this, is this how you really want this trial to end? But be quiet. How dare you? You, you're trying to trick me. That's enough! I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. 
However, it's clear that the defense's theory is the truth. You're wrong. What a shame. I had hoped things wouldn't come to this, however... What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. Uh-oh. Stop. Mr. Edgeworth! This witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. What? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Stop. Please stop. No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have the evidence right here. Ah! That's... That's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report. What will you do now, witness? You know what I am about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the courts the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. The secret of her dependent nature. Having other people know about it scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop! I beg you, if people find out... If people find out, I... I'll... If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. Wow, Edgeworth. That's pretty harsh. Edgeworth, how can you be so cold? However, before you die, I will pull the truth from your still-breathing lips. No matter what I have to do. So, will you tell the court yourself, or shall I? Either is fine with me. I... I'll talk, but please, help me. Nothing matters anymore. My crime. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted. Honest. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. And then, I stabbed Juan's dead body with a knife and ripped off the button. Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. And that's why... that's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. Was the inconvenience Lada? Stab the body? With the knife? But why would you do that? Isn't it obvious? To pin the blame on a certain person. A certain cowardly man. What? What do you mean by all this? It might take this court a little while to understand, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt. That scumbag of a man. I'll never forgive him. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time. Uh, last time? So, Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Corita, in the chest with a knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt on guard for the murder. And this, this is her crime. What? How is this possible? I mean, wasn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. Okay. I'm going to ask about... this. An inconvenience? There was a woman with a camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. I'm willing to bet my spikes it was Lotta. There was also a woman with a ray gun at the ready, pacing back and forth. And I think we know who that is. That's Miss Old Bag for you. I had already been caught and made into a big scoop for a certain weekly tabloid once. But I couldn't very well go out looking like myself and get caught again. Oh, that was it. Uh, let's start at the beginning. But you could tell from the state the room was in that there must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you say that you did not know he was dead? He had a scarf tied around his neck. That scarf is a part of the Jamma Ninja's costume, so... So I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up. 
and went to pour the juice. What is this plan you had? I knew right away the murderer was Matt. I knew because Juan, he was going to expose Matt's weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Juan and silence him for good. That's when I thought I should for forge some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. So the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing that came to mind was to plant the knife. I'm kind of curious about the way she says, I knew the real murderer was Matt. So, like, why would, if you knew that the real murderer was someone else, are you just, like, framing them in a doubling down kind of way? If you're just assuming that it's that person and you want it to be that person? Because, like, if that's what you think, wouldn't that be unnecessary? Because I'm assuming she's just wanting the murderer to be Matt. Like, that makes the most sense here. That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. I slipped in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the crime. And then... oh. So you were the one to stab the victim with that knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But, at the time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then, when I stabbed Juan's dead body, I suddenly realized something. If I used the button somehow, I could make Matt look even more suspect. Okay, so she is trying to make Matt look suspicious. I mean, I figured as much, but... It's strange that you would say, Well, I knew that it was this person, and then... Try to frame that person. I, I guess I just found that a little weird. So you thought to rip one of the buttons off and then plant it in Mr. On Guard's Hakama. Yes, that's what I had planned to do. But things never go that smoothly, do they? Okay, we did that. You were the one who prepared that costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put it inside into Juan's guitar case the day before the award ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes, Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is the secret? I'm still curious about that. That I don't know. Anyway, I thought that if I were to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough! So after that, you went back to Mr. On Guard's room and planted the button? Into Matt's Hakama? Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag. Then I snuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. My word! What does all this mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is Matt On Guard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Francisca, huh? She said that I should, under no circumstances, confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... I had no choice but to believe in her words. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not the real killer. Wait, Your Honor. The defense still... Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as the murderer. The cross-examination of this witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit? Please let it go, Mr. Wright. But, but... Mr. Edgeworth, please place Ms. Andrews under arrest for further questioning. Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. That is all. Court is adjourned for today. Oh. That gavel noise. Man, that's the first shot of that chair without the judge in it. Phoenix, are you okay, man? Today's 
Today's trial, it's over. And I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I asked you something? Edgeworth? What is it? Before you leave court today, I wondered if I might look at one thing. The card in your hand. It's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? I've been wondering that myself, especially since we've seen that card where Maya is. That's piqued my curiosity. Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. Although I didn't remember at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright, I remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. The room? That day? Yes. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. It was lying there right next to him. You found that card next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Oh, I think it has all the relevance to Juan's murder. Yeah, I guess not. But it's still a strange card, if you ask me. But as far as a clue to this case, I don't see why. Witness! That card! Give it to me! Hurry! Edgeworth, do you have any idea what you have stupidly, let yet inadvertently done? This! I can't believe you hid this from me all this time! I... I didn't mean to. What is this all about? I've never seen Edgeworth so emotional before. Yeah, not even in the last game. That card. What in the world is it, and what does it mean? To be continued. Okay, well hopefully Maya will still be okay, right? I guess we'll find out in the next part, part 3-1. But until then, thank you all so much for watching, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed yourselves today, and I will catch you in the next video. So take care, and I will see you then.